very little to show here okay but the story is interesting and it tells how powerful the Ashantis are. The hat the king wears is made with the talons of an eagle, the skin of a python, and the back of a crocodile. These animals are the strongest in their territories, and so should the spirit of the Ashantis be. Prempe the first became the thirteenth Ashanti king after his mother dethroned Kofikakari and Mensa Bonsu. Prempe the first was only eighteen years old when he became king. After the British defeated the Ashantis, the Ashantis were forced to pay 50,000 ounces of gold every month. The king then was paying this amount against the queen's wish or will. She hated the idea and so one day she hit the head of the king with her slippers. This symbolized being dethroned. Because the throne is on the matrilineal side, a king can either be brother or the son of the queen and not husband. After the act, the queen mother enthroned her own son, that's Prempe the first, when he was only 18 years old. Nana Prempe the first refused to pay this monthly amount the British requested from his uncle. For this reason, the British declared war against the Ashantis, but Nana Prempe the first refused to fight, and so he was arrested to a prison in Cecil's Island for 28 years. In the year 1900, Sir Frederick Hoxson also came and he stayed at the now Armed Forces Museum in Kumasi. He wanted the golden stool, Sikujakufi. This golden stool is the spirit of the Ashanti Kingdom. It unites all the 11 states of the Ashanti Kingdom. The Ashantis felt insulted by that request and so war was declared in the absence of Nana Prempe the first. So the queen mother of Ejusu, who was only 65 years old, then called Nanaya Asantewa. She was asked to bring the golden stool, but she said the only person who knew where the golden stool was is Nana Prempe the first. So bring him back from Shishils. The British fought the Ashantis in 1900 and was defeated by the Ashantis. But in 1901, the British fought with the Ashantis again and this time they prevailed. Nanaya Asantua was arrested and taken to Shishils where she spent 15 years and died. At first, the British soldiers thought she was a man because she looked like one. So they actually stripped her to her breast to make sure. The queen mother of Ejusu, Nanaya Asantua, before she went into exile, came up with an idea that a replica of the golden stool should be given to the British. This idea sold perfectly. Nana Prempe the first was brought back home in 1924. In 1925, the British built the old Mencia Palace for Nana Prempe the first as a compensation, but the Ashantis refused to let the king stay in until they paid for the palace. After 70 years, the British found out about the golden stool that it was fake. After Nana Prempe the first died, Osei Chirichi, also known as Prempe the second, was enthroned or became his successor. Nana Prempe the second married eight women and had 20 children. Whenever an Ashanti king sits at a gathering, he puts his feet on a footrest called Akrokoroa. This protects him from any evil intended against him. Queen mothers are carried on heads 
while kings are carried on shoulders. This means the kingdom belongs to the woman, but its strength rests on the shoulders of the men. Malin. Sorry, this is not a story of Malin. It's a story of the Ashantis. <laughs> the two fishes biting each other on the headband of Nana Opokuari is called Obinkebia, Obinkebi, meaning they are minding their business until the enemy attacks. The Ashantis came from ancient Mesopotamia. The Ashantis were not part of the ancient Gold Coast. Through all, the Moshi people are part of the Ashantis. That's why there is present day Moshi Zongo. And the Baoli people of Ivory Coast are Akans from Insuta. Akans can also be found in Seychelles and Suriname and other Caribbean lands. The Matakari Kesia is an armor made by Okonfo Anoche and the Dagombes. It will naturally and mysteriously resize to fit any king, no matter his size. He wears it for war or funeral. He puts Aya in his mouth. This is because the Patakari Kesia spiritually opens the eyes of the king that wears it. He sees mysterious things and so this Aya leaf prevents him from saying sacred stuff. After the event, he meets with the elders of the elders to tell them what he saw. Kindly subscribe to my channel and like my videos. Thank you.